Landing your first job doesn't have to be hard. I applied to five different companies when looking for my first job, got interviews from four of them, and I got job offers from all four companies I interviewed with. And the only reason I was able to do that was because I followed these three tips that I'm going to share with you in this video that I really don't see very many people talking about. Also, I have one bonus tip I'm going to share with you that's something that I didn't do, but I wish I had done because it would have helped me even further land my first job. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can land your dream job sooner. And the first piece of advice I can give you on landing your first job is actually very counterintuitive to most advice you hear, and that is to apply to less jobs. Now, this may sound crazy because if you go to places like Reddit or the comments on YouTube videos, you see people saying they applied to like 50 or 100 different jobs and didn't hear back from any of them. But that's actually their problem. They are applying to too many jobs. And when you do this, odds are you're probably applying to a lot of jobs that you're not qualified for because you're trying to send your resume to as many jobs as possible. So if you're not qualified, obviously they're not going to reach out to you for an interview. But on the jobs that you are qualified for, when you send out your resume, it's just a generic resume. You haven't tailored it to that company at all. You haven't tailored it to that job. And they get tons and tons of these generic spammed out resumes. And of course, they're just going to ignore all of them because they don't have anything interesting or engaging in them. So instead, what I say you should do is apply to much, much less companies. I myself only applied to five specific companies because they were the five companies I wanted to work at. And I figured I'm going to put all my effort into these five companies instead of applying to 50 or 100 companies where I really don't care about working out a lot of them. So now when you're applying to these different companies, what you need to do is you need to do a lot of research. You need to figure out, okay, what do these companies use for technologies? Are they like a web company? Like what are their morals, their values? Figure out everything you can about these companies. I mean, if you need to spend 30 minutes to an hour doing research, that is fine. Take as long as you need to really research this company, figure out what they enjoy, what they value, and what they work within, and then tailor your resume for that job. If they're like a JavaScript based company, focus on all your JavaScript based projects and skills instead of worrying about all your things on, you know, Rails. It doesn't matter if you use Rails because they don't care about that. Focus heavily on the things that they use. And if they have specific values, again, try to focus those values into your resume however you can if possible. Another thing you can do besides just tailoring your resume is actually to create a custom cover letter. And the nice thing about all this research that you did earlier is that you know exactly what this company works in and what their values are. So you can tailor your cover letter to really focus on those different values and the different skills you have that are directly applicable to the work that they're doing. If I'm hiring for a job and I see, you know, a thousand generic resumes that are all exactly the same, and then I see one resume that comes in with a cover letter that speaks directly to my company values and also has skills that are directly applicable to the job that I'm hiring for, I'm going to be much more likely to reach out to that person to go for an interview than all these generic resumes that just are kind of generic. And this is actually advice that's applicable to any job, not just web development or programming related jobs. My fiance recently was applying for a bunch of jobs and she really spent her time researching all the companies, writing out a custom cover letter for every single one and tailoring every single thing on her resume to fit exactly what those companies were looking for. And by doing so, she heard back from many more companies than the other peers that she had that were applying to. Even though she applied to less jobs, she was getting more interviews because of the extra time she took to put into each resume and each cover letter. So this is something that definitely works no matter what type of job you're applying for. Now, the next thing that you can do before you go applying for jobs even is to work on your portfolio projects. A lot of people build out portfolio projects that are just generic. They're like a to-do list app or a weather app, something that you can find a tutorial online for, follow through exactly, and just there's your project. I mean, I have tons of people that take my YouTube tutorials, they copy them down directly, and they use them as their portfolio projects. And while technically there's really nothing wrong with that, you're going to have 100 other resumes with the same or similar project on them, and it's just kind of boring. They look at that and they go, okay, this person probably just followed the tutorial and that's how they did it. Instead, you should really be focusing on unique projects that are things that are interesting to you. A to-do list app is not interesting. It's not interesting to you, and it's not interesting to the companies you're applying for. Instead, find something you're interested in. Maybe you're interested in sports. Well, how about you find an API for the sports that you care about and compile down you know, a website that has a bunch of different stats on all the players and the different sport leagues and stuff like that. That is something that's interesting. It's pretty unique because there's not really much out there that's going to be similar to that. And when an employer looks at that, they're going to go, oh, that's really cool. This is something unique I haven't seen before, which means clearly they spent a lot of time on this project trying to learn a bunch of different new things for it because they couldn't just copy down a tutorial for it. 
Another thing you want to do is really try to show off your wide array of skills as much as possible. Because if you're going to be applying for a JavaScript job, you want to have some JavaScript projects. If you're applying for a React job, you want React projects. If you're applying for like a backend role, you want to have some backend projects. So just use your portfolio as a way to try a bunch of different skills. And then you can tailor the resume that you're making to have those specific projects on it. But also they can see all your projects as well if they go to your portfolio. And the nice thing about that is that they can see, okay, this person has the skills we need in JavaScript, for example, but also they've learned all these other things, which means that they're really good at learning. And when companies are hiring for a junior role, they care more about your ability to learn than they care about your actual current skill set. So if you can show that you're really good at learning, you're willing to learn, and you enjoy it, that is going to be much more valuable than showing that you know specific things about JavaScript because odds are you don't know as much as you're going to need to to do the job, so they're going to have to train you and teach you no matter how much you know. So if you can show you're easy to train and easy to teach, they're going to be much more likely to want to hire you. Another important note about these portfolio projects is you want to make sure that they're all hosted so that people can view them without having to download the code and run it themselves. Most of the time when you're applying to jobs, you're going to get a lot of non-technical people looking at your resume as a first glance. And if all you have are GitHub links and you don't have links to working projects, they're not going to know what that GitHub link really does. They're not going to know what that is. So it's important to have some links to the working project as well as links to the code if wanted. That way, the people that don't have the technical skills to download and run it can still view the project, and even the people with technical skills probably aren't going to take the time to download your code and run it locally. They're just not going to care. So having a link where they can view it is really important. And then having the code for if they want to go in and look at your code to make sure you know you have clean code and good coding practices, that's good as well. But most importantly, just have a link that's going to go to the project in a working, running live example. Now the final point I want to cover before we get to the bonus point is something to do with when you actually get into the interview. These first two points are all about getting that interview and the final point is taking the interview and leading to a job offer because that's sometimes the hardest part. And really the most important thing you can do when you're going into an interview is to be confident. I know a lot of people say this but it is just crucial. You need to be confident that you are not only good but you are the best candidate that they're interviewing because the job they're interviewing for one person to take that role and they're going to look for the best person. So if you're not confident and you don't believe that you're the best person for the role, why would the people interviewing you believe that you're going to be the best? They're not. If you don't believe it, they're not going to believe it. So you need to be confident and believe you are the best person for the role. And by doing that, you're going to kind of rub off that confidence onto them. And they're going to look at you and think, oh, wow, this guy thinks that they're the best that they can be for this role. They probably are. I mean, obviously, don't go into the interview and say, hey, I'm the best person you're going to interview because that's just kind of egotistical and it's really bad. But you want to just kind of have that confidence built in and kind of exude that confidence out so that they see that and they know that you're going to be the best. Because if you come in with a lack of confidence, like I said, they're going to pick up on that and they're going to be like, why would we hire this person? They clearly don't think they're the best. So we're going to go with someone else that is the best. Now, I know this right here is hard for a lot of people because you know that you don't know everything. You're not the smartest in the entire world or whatever it is. But the important thing is you don't have to be the smartest or the most knowledgeable to be the best person for that job. There are a lot of things that go into fitting a job role. One of those things is obviously the knowledge around the technology that they're using, but other things are like company fit and things like how willing are you to learn? How quickly do you learn? How much of an enjoyable person are you to be around? How maybe you know, you're really good at CSS and even though it's more of a JavaScript role, those CSS skills are going to play into it so you have that as your strength. Figure out what your strength is. What is the thing that makes you the best for that role? And really try to focus on that in the interview. Anytime you get asked questions, you know, really try to focus on the things that make you the strongest and make you the best possible candidate because that's going to show off your best possible side. Also, another really important thing to focus on in the interview is you don't have to know everything. They're going to ask you questions or make you, you know, do different coding problems. And odds are you're probably not going to know the answer to everything they ask you or know the answer to all the coding problems they give you. And that is okay. A lot of people, once they get an answer wrong, they start to get flustered. They start to get worried. Oh no, I messed up. I can't possibly get the job anymore. They're looking for someone that's perfect. But especially when you're looking for your first job, they're just looking for someone that knows how to learn. And if you get a question wrong, that's okay. They want to just kind of see how you go through your thought process of that problem. And you can kind of use that as a way of showing how you would learn. You know, maybe you got something wrong. You can show like, okay, you know, I got this wrong, but I know that this is maybe why I did this wrong. I didn't know how this thing worked. You know, I can go and research that thing, figure it out. And that's going to be, you know, your learning process. And they can see, okay, when this person encountered a problem, which when you're a junior developer happens all the time, they're able to overcome that problem, learn what they need to do and fix it. That's a much more valuable skill than knowing how to answer the interview questions they give you. So as long as you have that skill of you know, showing that you're willing to learn and showing that you're able to overcome problems, that's much more important.
Now the final bonus tip is something I personally didn't do, but I think if I would have done, it would have helped me even more with landing jobs and getting offers. And that is just to put myself out there more in the you know overall coding world. This could be anything from you know like trying to write blog articles, create a YouTube channel. Those I don't really think are the best options because they're a ton of work with very little payoff unless you like really are into it and really enjoy it. But more so what you can do is you can go to meetups, go to conferences, go to virtual conferences, anything that exposes you to a bunch of people that are kind of like-minded, you know, other developers, other people hiring for jobs. This is not only going to help you learn a ton, but you're also going to meet a bunch of other people, which is really great for networking. And best of all, if let's say you're applying for a JavaScript job and you're really active or even maybe a board member of like a JavaScript local meetup that you have in your city, that's going to be great to put on your resume because you're like, you know what? I not only am good at JavaScript and have these projects, but I go to this meetup and I'm maybe even the vice president of this you know, meetup that we have. That's going to look really good on a resume. So not only are you able to network with people, learn, but also it's going to increase your resume skills. So overall, I think going over to like meetups and conferences and so on is another great way to really improve your abilities to land a job. Now that you know how to land your first job, you're probably wondering what the first job is going to be like, or maybe you're wondering, am I even ready to apply for my first job? I have videos covering both those topics linked over here that you should definitely check out. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.